feel sometimes. On, but man. Jesus said he'll make a way out of no way. Wow, I don't worry about my bills. Sunday morning, no bill collectors knocking at my door. Oh, if they come on Sunday morning, I'll be at church. Sunday morning, cause everything gonna be alright. I don't worry about my feelings and weight, cause I know that the Lord has already made a way. There's something about that day, it is gonna be the Lord. I got one more thing I want to tell you. Y'all ain't gonna believe this now. Listen, some folks don't go to church on Sunday morning. Don't stay at home. Some even go fishing. Oh, they don't know. On Sunday morning, they just don't know. Just what they're missing. She's Church of Christ. We are very thankful once again for this wonderful opportunity that the Lord has blessed us with to be here this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made and let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is so good. It is so good to see you this morning and we just pray that you are enjoying the blessings of the Lord. We pray that those that are watching us on Facebook will join in with us as we all come this morning to worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth. We serve a mighty good God. We serve a mighty good God. We serve a mighty good God. And our God is worthy to be praised. It's in God that we live and move and have our very being and without our God we're nothing. 
So this morning as we get ready for our morning worship service, we want to give a few announcements. We want to uh, keep in prayer uh, those that are sick and shut in among us, those that have had, that have had lost, lost loved ones. We want to uh, most certainly pray for them. We want you to know that our hearts are on, on you and we're thinking about you and we are just keeping you in our prayers. Uh, on yesterday, we had a great day, the seniors, the seniors had a great, wonderful, wonderful day. Now, the, the, the senior committee, and we want to thank our senior committee uh, for, what the, for what they did for our seniors. They, uh, we usually every year have a banquet at the end of the year for our seniors, but we were not able to have that banquet. But what we did, we had a drive through had a drive through and, uh, and, and we had the seniors to come uh, through and pick up their, uh, their, their dinner. So a drive through banquet. I don't know, what, did y'all dress up for that? Did the seniors, did y'all dress up? Y'all didn't dress up. Y'all just drove through. But anyway, it is, that, that, that was just very thoughtful for that committee. We love them and we appreciate them so very, very much for what they have done and what they continue to do to show uh, their love and appreciation to our seniors. We got some good seniors here, starting off with Brother Wright. I'm tired, Brother Wright. Uh, just a, are you leading the pack, Brother Wright? Okay, we got some good seniors here, and may God continue to bless our seniors uh, with their health and strength and they already have a great love for the Lord and we just pray that God will just continue to be with them. Also, uh, as you know, on today at, uh, at 12 o'clock, we are going to have our chairperson meeting uh, via go to meeting. Our chairperson meeting via go to meeting. So uh, please join us on that go to meeting line uh, at 12 o'clock on today. And we are planning on having just for about an hour. And so we're just going to be throwing out different ideals and thoughts on what we can do for next year. We're just praying that God would just be good to us. You know we got this virus. Let, let, let's thank the Lord. Let's thank the Lord for this virus, uh, for, we, uh, for this vaccine. This vaccine that the Lord has blessed us with, that we, we, pray, we pray that it will work and that we can get sort of back to a little normalcy uh, with this vaccine. Hopefully everybody will, uh, people will start uh, taking their shots probably Monday or Tuesday here in America. But we're thankful. We're thankful for the advancement of science, but we know that it's all because of God. And his goodness and his mercy that he has allowed us to still be on this side of life. And we pray for those that are, have lost loved ones as well. Now, I need to make this announcement, and I probably, uh, but I, I need to make this announcement. I, I, have a, I have a good friend, and because of, because of the situation that we are now in, we don't get a chance to do things. But my, I got a good friend, and I know he's just going to be as surprised and shocked as he can be. But I wanted to take this time to, uh, to, uh, well, uh, to uh, wish a happy birthday to one of my best friends, one of my best uh, friends in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, my friend by the name of Larry Bratchett. It, it's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful that you can have a friend. And so Brother Bratchett, uh, uh, we've been knowing one another for some uh, 40 some odd years, for about 41, 42 years. And this particular guy, he calls me every Sunday. That, that's why I had to wish him a happy birthday. He calls me every Sunday. A Sunday does not go by that he does not call me and thank me for the message. Isn't that something? That's a real good friend, man. That's a real good friend, someone that calls you and encourages you in, 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 in your preaching walk. And so today he's 65 years old, and we just want to wish him a happy birthday along with those as well. And I've been a little under the weather uh, this week, and... Uh, and I know we've had a lot of our members with birthdays, and we mentioned that as well and stuff. And I, I, didn't usually, I usually get a chance to uh, call and mess with you guys, at least uh, say something about y'all on, on, on Facebook or text y'all or something and say something to you. But I didn't get a chance to do that uh, this, this time. But y'all know y'all did have a, a birthday, right? Thanks, folks like Juicella. Folks like KK. I know these are just some of the people. 
that I know had birthdays in the month of December. So once again, let me thank you so very much for you being here with us, and let me thank you so very much for your continuous support in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we know that there are a number of our members that are still not able to come and be with us in the, in the worship service, but you are continuing to support us and you are continuing to encourage us and we just pray that you will just continue in that vein and those uh, that, uh, that are online and you are watching, please continue to watch us and those that are uh, sending in their contribution online uh, coming by the church building and dropping off your contribution at, at the church building. Please, please continue to do that because your, 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 your effort and your work and your labor of love is most certainly is being shown and is most certainly being appreciated. Now, if there are those among us that when you come on Saturdays and I'm not here, please do not uh, put your contribution uh, through the doors because the contribution, your, your envelope will no longer fit through the door. So please do not try to put your contribution through the doors. Your envelope will not fit through the doors. I've come on Saturday mornings, and maybe I shouldn't say that, but I found envelopes on the floor, on the ground. Uh, we, we don't need that, y'all. We love y'all, we appreciate y'all, but in that effort there, you're giving more than just to the Lord. Okay, somebody could just come and pick that up off the ground. So uh, please, if, it, if it, uh, it, it will not go through there. So go across as the street here uh, at, the, uh, at, at the boutique, and you can drop off your offering over there if no one is here uh, at Saturday morning. But on Saturdays, we, we do it from 10 to 11, from 10 to 11 on Saturday morning for, for the offering. But once again, let me thank you so very much. Everybody feel good? Everybody feel good? Everybody ready to worship the Lord? Okay, Brother Kills is going to come, and he's going to lead us in a word of prayer. And we are now in, ready to worship the Lord our God in spirit and in truth. Good morning, family. Shall we bow to God in word of prayer? Dear God, our merciful Father, we come to thee at this time thanking thee for life, health, strength, for the opportunity to assemble here, God, to praise thee in spirit and in truth. We pray, dear God, that the things that we do here today will be pleasing, acceptable in thy sight. We ask thee, first of all, dear God, to cleanse us of those sins, dear God. Forgive us of those sins so that we may worship thee truly in spirit and in truth. Father, we know that there are so many things that we feel that we feel have fallen short of, but you, through your grace and mercy, you afford us the opportunity to repent and live a better life. We pray to God, asking thee for not only health and strength, dear God, but we ask thee to continue to bless the leaders of this church, of this city, of our nation, so that they continue to make decisions and stuff that did not hinder us from coming and worshiping thee in spirit and in truth. Father, we continue to pray for our city. We know, dear God, that there's so much violence among our youth. Yeah. We pray, dear God, that you continue to bless these children, dear God. Show them the way. Show them the way away from violence. Show them the way, dear God, that will lead into the righteousness and to the Father God, we also ask that you continue to bless us in such a way, dear God, that we continue to shine as a light unto the world. In our son Jesus' name, do we pray and ask these blessings and favors. Amen. Amen. In the red hymn book, let us know 653. In the red hymn book. Sing and be happy. There's a few of us, let's make it sound like it's 300. <laughs> Time. Yeah. If the skies above you are gray, you are feeling so blue. If your cares and burdens seem great all the whole day through, there's a silver lining that shines in the bright thing there. Look by faith and see it, my friend. Trust his promises grand. Oh, sing and 
Be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you. He will keep your soul. Let home be faithful. Look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song. Sing and be happy today. Often we are troubled and tired, sick with sorrow and pain. There are others living in sin, all where they gain. Take new courage, we cannot tell what the morrow may bring. When the dark clouds vanish away, then your heart truly can sing. Oh, sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let home be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and praise him in song, sing and be happy today. Oft we fail to see the rainbow up in heaven's fair sky. And when it seems the fortunes of earth frown and pass us by. And there are things we know that are worth more than silver and gold. If we hope and trust them each day, we shall have pleasures untold. Oh, sing and be happy, press on to the goal. Trust him who leads you, he will keep your soul. Let home be faithful, look to him and pray. Lift your voice and sing him his song, sing and be happy today. If then we are brothers and tired, give me the script. <laughs> We got four, don't we? <laughs> Number four. There's only three? Y'all right. <laughs> My mistake, I saw four. <laughs> We're still learning. <laughs> All right, next song. We're going to sing, He Loves Me So, as we prepare for communion. Three stands. Time. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble goal? Why did he choose a lowly bird? Because he loved me so. He loves 
this time we should have our minds and our hearts on Jesus and the great sacrifice that he made for us all. We find our examples in the Bible, Acts 20 and 7. The Bible says that upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. We also find in Acts 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, verses 23 and 24. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Say, so we give thanks for the bread. Dear God, I have the Father, we come thanking thee for this bread which represents our son broken body. We pray that we do so. Everyone who would partake of it do so with a matter that is pleasing and acceptable in our sight. In our son Jesus' name we pray and ask his blessings and favors. Amen. Continuation of 1 Corinthians 11 chapter, verse 25 through 29. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Shall we pray for the cup? Dear God, we come thanking you for this cup. Pray to God that we take it with clean hands, pure heart, and would not condemn us in this life or in the life to come. In our Son, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The other part of the service, which again is my favorite, concerns offerings. And I know that every one of us know that this is the Christmas holiday season. The world looks upon the 25th as the day of giving. But I'm so grateful to have a God and stuff that to me, every day is Christmas. And the thing is, I'm, I'm, I'm just so grateful to him, and I, <laughs> I'm just praying for today that not only myself, but we all can all do more. So this morning, I'm taking for the scriptures for offering is 2 Corinthians, verse 9, verse 7 and 8. excuse me, verse 6 and 7. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. He which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, 
not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Church, do I hear joy out there? Amen. 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 So we pray for the offering. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we come thanking thee for allowing us the opportunity to have jobs, dear God, to have money in order to fund this organization, this church, this institution. We pray to God as we move forward throughout this year and going into next year, did you help us to reduce our debt and increase our offering, dear God, so that we may live debt free from society and begin to increase the things that you would have us to do. In our son Jesus' name, we pray and ask these blessings and favors. Amen. Amen. Let us notice in our red hymn book, 473. 473 in our red hymn book. Time. Tempted and tried, we're all made to wonder why it should be those all the day long. While there are others living about us, never molested, though in the wrong. Father alone. <coughs> Tear up my bro. 
read hymn book 202. Anywhere is home. Time. Earthly wealth and fame may never come to me, and the palace fair here mine may never be, but they come what may. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who heals us from all of our iniquities, who purges us from all of our sins. Once again, the God in heaven truly has been mighty good to us, and the Lord has blessed us with another good and perfect day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day that the Lord has made, and let us all rejoice and be glad in it. I most certainly want to thank Brother Brown for leading us in our song service uh, this morning. I tell you, with these screens and these monitors here and the songs, everybody knows when you mess up now, don't they? 
I tell you, there's technology here, there's technology. But God is good, and we're thankful for this another opportunity. And I'm thinking, I'm seeing Brother Prince out there in the foyer, and we most certainly want to welcome those. I know he's been in the hospital, but we, it's, it's good to have him uh, with us this morning. And let's, let's most certainly, let's most certainly, if God has blessed you that you have not been able, you, you have not gone to the hospital and you don't have any friends or family members in the hospital, please just continue to pray. Because God has been good to you, and you need to just continue to thank God for his goodness and his mercy that he has showered upon you. Let me invite your attention to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, we want to start at verse number 1. The book of Acts uh, chapter 3, and let's start at verse number 1. For the reading of the scripture, the reading of God's word uh, this morning. Acts chapter 3, beginning at verse number 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. A certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that enter into the temple who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, acts in arms. And Peter fastened his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, I silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bone received uh, strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew it was he which sat at arm, for, set for arms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonders and amazement at that which had happened unto him. Read right until you hear in Acts chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his holy and divine word. I have learned that you can learn from anybody. I have learned that you can learn not just from anybody, but you can learn from anything as well. Uh, this morning, I looking at the book of Proverbs, the wise man Solomon, Proverbs chapter 30 and verse number 24. Solomon said, there be four things which are little upon the earth, but they are exceedingly wise. You can learn from anybody. You can learn either to do, how to do, or uh, how not to do, but you can learn from anybody. The Bible says in Proverbs 30 and verse number 25, the ants are people not strong, yet they prepare their meat in the summer. The conies are but a feeble folk, yet make their houses in the rocks. The locusts have no king, yet Go day forth, all of them by band. The spider take his hold with his hand and is in the king's palace. There be three things which go well, yea, four are commonly uh, in going. A lion which is strong among the beasts and turneth not away for any. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 6, 
And verse number 26, Matthew chapter 6 and verse number 26, he tells us that we can look at the fowls of the air, showing us that there are things that you can look at that you can admire, that you can examine, and that you can learn from. Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap nor gather into bonds, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are not ye much better than they? Verse number 28. Why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Jesus said you can learn from the birds in the sky that if God take care of them, he surely will take care of us. Jesus said you can learn from the lilies in the field. If God take care of the lilies of the fields, surely you can learn that God will take care of us. So I want to look this morning, I want to share this morning with you on the subject that even from dealing with this man in Acts chapter 3, this lame man, this beggar, I am believing that there is a lesson, there are things that we can even learn and that we can use from this beggar that's going to be helpful for us with our everyday life and living. I want to use as a subject this morning, live and learn. And learn. Live, live and, learn. and learn. That God, that God doesn't, doesn't just want, want us to live, to live but God wants us to learn in our living. God don't want us to just learn, but he also wants us to live. So live and learn. Because the Bible says, Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Life is not just about living, but it's about learning how to live. And so this morning, I, I want to share with you that even this lame man, even this beggar, that there are some things that we can learn from a beggar. We can learn from a beggar. And I believe this morning that the more you learn, the better you ought to live. And Paul said, I have learned that whatsoever state I'm in, therein to be content. And so there are many of us this morning that, 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 that has more, more than this lame man had. But I don't know whether or not many of us live better than this lame man did. There are many of us that have more than this beggar had. But there are many of us that are living beneath our privilege because we have not learned how to live. And Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Live and learn. This particular passage of scripture found in Acts chapter 3, this is a very familiar passage of scripture. As a matter of fact, this particular episode is one of the first, or it is the first miracle that was done by the apostles at the beginning of the start of the church. 
So this particular passage or this particular miracle, it was one that brought not only the, uh, this lame man to his feet, but it was a miracle that brought many people to expose them to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because what happened to this lame man, many people came to know Jesus and the pardon of their sins. And so when you look at Acts chapter 3, you, you see Peter, and you see John. But this morning, I, I want to us to gleam in on this lame man. I want to gleam in on this beggar because I believe that there is a message in here for us this morning. This beggar. How can we get anything good? How can we get anything positive from a beggar? How can we get anything good, anything positive from a beggar? How can we use this particular man, life? That's going to be helpful to us for our everyday walk. So I say this morning, follow me, and we can both, all of us can live and learn. First thing I want you to see, is the Bible says in Acts chapter 3, in verse number 1 and 2, the Bible says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the, night, uh, at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. The Bible say, now Peter and John went up to together in the temple at the hour of prayer. Peter and John being the ninth hour and a certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask alms of them that enter into the temple. Brother Smith, what, what can I live and learn from this? Number one, I, I'm able to see that this particular lame man, I'm trying, what, what can I learn from this lame man? What can I learn from this beggar? Number one, that he was in the right place. He was in the right place to receive a blessing. He was in the right place. The Bible say, the Bible say, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer. I'm tired. Peter and John, I'm tired. Peter and John is there. I'm tired. He's in the right place, y'all. This lame man, this beggar is in the right place because he's there with Peter and John. He's in the right place. He's in a place of prayer. He's in the right place, somebody. If prayer can do anything, prayer can change our destiny. Prayer can change our walk. Prayer can change our action. Prayer can change our direction. This man is in the right place because Peter and John is there. This man is in the right place because he's at a place of prayer. This man is in a right place because he's where God is. The Bible says, certain man laying from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple. This man was looking for arms. This man was looking for help. This man was looking for a hand to help him up. And if, if there's any place that ought to be helpful, if there's any place that ought to be given, if there's any place that ought to be encouraging, it ought to be the house of God. It ought to be the house of prayer. People say that they want to be helped. But they never go to the places that can help them. The tavern ain't going to help you to, get to find God. The jukebox is not going to help you to find God. I'm telling you, you ripping and running and going from here to there, from this house to that house, to leaving this place and that place. You need to make sure that you are in the right place. Bible says in John chapter 5, that there was many impotent folks that was laid at the porch of Bethesda. 
Why? Why were they there? Because they believed that healing was there. Why was this man in the right place? It's because he believed that if there was anybody that would help him, it would be good church folks. If there was anybody that would help him, it would be people that is, that is searching for God and knowing what God has done for them. They got, you, you got a better chance catching a fly ball at a baseball game than you're out there just in the streets. This man was in the right place. You got a better chance of catching a football, a, a football at a football game. You gotta have to be in the right place. You got to be, you got a better chance. You got a better chance receiving something positive from, from, from somebody if you are in the right place in order to receive something positive. You up here, you want your life to be better, but you're in the wrong place. People in the tavern, people at the juke joint are not there trying to encourage you to live a better life. You need to go around people and you got to be around people that are encouraging people. You're going to have to be in the right place in order to get the right thing. The Bible says, the Bible says, this certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. To ask arm of him. This beggar is at the right place. The temple. If there are anybody that, that, that's going to be giving people, giving to people, it ought to be people that go to the temple to pray. This beggar is at the right place. If there is anybody that will have an open heart for the needy, it ought to be people at the church. Jesus said to his followers in Matthew chapter 25, Matthew chapter 25 and verse number, Matthew 25 and verse number 34. Jesus says, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger and fed thee a thirsty, gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in a naked and clothed thee? When saw we thee in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Learning from a beggar. Live and learn that this beggar, the first thing that he did, this beggar, the, 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 this lame man, the first thing that he did is that he had to be in the right place. Sometimes we look at our lives and we say, I, 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 just, don't, I, I, just, I just don't know how I'm going to make it. Are you in the right place? Are you in the right place? Are you in the, in the right place, in the right direction for the right purpose? The Bible says, look at the next thing. Acts, go back to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. And the Bible says, in verse number two, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. I, I don't know, do y'all see that like I do? The Bible says, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. Do y'all see that? And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. Whom they laid daily, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful. What I can learn from this beggar, what I can learn from this lame man is that you got to be in the right place. And then number two, he had good parents. Or he had dependable friends. Do y'all see that? This man was lame. This man was a beggar. But the Bible say, it, it didn't tell us who brought him there. It didn't tell us that. 
But the Bible said that this man was carried daily to the temple. Meaning that this man had good parents, or this man had good friends in his life. There are people that would do things for you one time. Oh, man. But that's a good family. That's a good friend that would do something with you and do something for you every day. Now, I give you a dollar one time. I may pass by over there where you are with that sign, and I may be moved by it with compassion during this Christmas holiday season, but, but how many of us would do something for somebody every day? The Bible say that this man that was lame was carried daily to the temple. What I'm able to see, what I'm able to see is that this man, this man had friends. This man had parents. And I don't know whether or not when you get ready to start counting your blessings, do you ever thank God for your family? I tell you, when you start counting your blessings, and you start talking about what you don't have and you start looking at what everybody else got. Do you stop long enough to say, I got somebody in my life that has been there for me not just one time out of the month or not just one time out of the year, but I got somebody in my life that has been there with me and been there for me every day. Are you, are you able to count? Your friends. I don't know, and I'm, I'm going to tell y'all something. Every year, I look at it's a wonderful life. And I hate to tell y'all this, but I cry every year. A wonderful life, I cry every time I see that movie. At the end of that movie, it brings tears to my eyes. And then at the end of the movie, they have these words. That no man is a failure if he has friends. <laughs> do do y'all not know how important it is to have somebody? Y yes, he's lame. Yes, he's a beggar, but this man had somebody that cared for him. And I'm saying that's a, that, that, that's a learn, live to learn that if you got friends in this world, Jesus say, greater love has no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friends. This man had friends, and I, and I talked I talk to you guys about uh, Brother Bratchett, and, uh, and my, my friend Bratchett and stuff, and him and I, we, we, that family and I, we've been friends for about 40 some odd years. He's an elder at the church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but he is a good friend. And I, and I know a lot of times we take for granted people in our lives. But do you, everybody needs somebody that they can depend on. Everybody needs somebody. If there's just this one person that I know that I can call and I know I can share with and I know that will help me through my hard times and through my difficult times, everybody needs somebody like that. What, what, what I can learn from this beggar is that just like Moses needed an errand, I need a friend in my life. Just like Moses needed a Joshua. Everybody needs somebody. Don't live and don't carry yourself. Is that I don't need nobody. I, I can make it by myself. No, all of us. All of us need somebody. 
I'm trying to live and learn that no man is an island. No man liveth to himself. No man dieth to himself. Everybody needs somebody. And if God has blessed you with good friends and God has blessed you with a good family and if God has blessed you with a good church house, if God has blessed you with good friends, you, are, you got a lot to be thankful for this morning. Joshua said, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether it be the gods that your father served that was on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorite, in whom land you now dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Paul had a Barnabas. Paul had a Timothy. Paul had a Titus. Paul had a Silas. Jesus had a Peter, a James, and a John. Live and learn. Number three, the Bible says, verse number two, and, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. Look, look here. To ask alms of them, that enter into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, did what y'all? Ask alms. My third point is that you can live and learn from this beggar, from this lame man that he was in the right place. You can live and learn from this beggar that this beggar had good friends, good parents, good family, because they carried him every day and laid him at the beautiful gate every day. Somebody cared about him. And I'm saying to you, you got, you got a whole lot going for you this morning when you got somebody that care about you. And number three, the Bible says, to ask arm of them that enter into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an arm. What, what, my third, what is my third point? My third point is that he came with the same message every day. Uh, okay, I, I need to, thank you, thank you. My, God bless you, I got brothers that just appreciate it. I, it, it just, I just don't do it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I, I pulled up a handkerchief. I, I thought I'd be a nun. Okay. But he cares about me, y'all. And it's a beautiful thing that you got somebody that cares about you. And then the Bible says, the Bible say he acts arms. My third point is that he had a simple message. I'm tired. I'm tired. He acts the same thing every day. Do y'all know about beggars? Most beggars will ask you the same thing every time they see you. Can you, can you spare some change? They don't usually say, brother, can you give me $10? I'm tired. He had the same message and it was a simple message that he had every day. Everybody that came in contact with this beggar, everybody that came in contact with this lame man knew what the question was going to be. He had the same question. He had the same statement. He asked arms of the people. Everybody that came in contact with him, he knew, he, he's asking, can you help me? Everybody that came in contact, he's asking, brother, can you spare a dime? He kept his message simple, and he brought the same message every day. He asked Peter and John for arms. Everybody that passed by this lame man, he asked arms of them. Every day, he had the same message. Go to the dollar store. The same message. Everything in the dollar store, what, y'all? Yeah, and you imagine going to that accident, how much this cost? 
the same message. Everything in the dollar store is a dollar. I tell you, it's a simple message. And I believe that what we need to try to make sure that what we can learn from this lame man is that anything and almost anything that we can accomplish and we can make happen if we make it simple. Make sure, make sure that we are, that, that we all come together with the same message. That we are preaching and teaching the same thing. On the day of Pentecost, they asked Peter the question, men and brethren, what shall we do? Peter said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. They asked, he had the same simple message. Matthew chapter 28 and verses 18 through 20, Jesus said, all power in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Go ye into all the world and baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. The message is simple. We the one that don't complicate it so now. We can't get nothing accomplished. Peter said, and Jesus said in Mark 16 and 16, he that believeth and he is baptized, shall be saved. John the Baptist came with a simple message. Matthew 3 and verse number, two, uh, verse number 2, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Number 4, what can you live and learn from this beggar, from this lame man? Is that this man used what he had to get what he needed. Y'all see that? He used what he had to get what he needed. His legs didn't work, but his mouth did. His legs didn't work, but his ears did. <laughs> This man used what he had to get what he wants. This man used what he had to get what he needed. The Bible said he saw Peter and John and he asked alms of them with his eyes and with his mouth. He used these things. I have a grandkids, I have a grandkids, when they come over to the house and they, they are pointing, they are pointing and all this other stuff here, uh, you know, and, and, and we say to them, open your mouth. Tell us what you want. Tell us what you need. So many times we, we, we sit back and because I can't walk, we don't want to use our mouths. Because I can't walk, we act like we can't hear, but we need to learn how to use what we got. And the Bible talks about, y'all remember that Canaanite woman? The Bible said that when, he, when, she saw, when she saw Jesus, the disciples, they began to, the apostles began to say, uh, 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 send her away because she's cried after her. And the woman just continued to cry and cry and cry, just like those two blind men. You remember how they began to continue to yell when they rebuked them and told them to be quiet, but they used what they had. What can I learn from this beggar? What can I learn from this lame man? That if God has given me good eyes, I ought to use those eyes. If God has given me a good voice, I ought to use. There are, there are blind people that are blind, but they still can sing, Stevie. There are people that are lame, they, but they still, they still can play a piano. I tell you, whatever God has blessed you with, don't, don't sit back and feel sorry for yourself. Stand up and understand that if God brought you here, God has a purpose for you. Live and learn. I'm trying to move pretty fast here this morning. What can I, what can I, what, what can I learn from this? From this blind man, what can I learn from this beggar? Is that he knew how to take instructions. 
He knew how to take instructions. You know, there are, there are, there are people and stuff that, that don't know. The, the reason that they can't get far in life is because they don't know how to follow instructions. Peter and John said to this blind man, look on us. This blind man didn't begin to start complaining. What did he do, y'all? He looked on them. And so many times in life, the reason that we fail to get what we want and to get what we need is because we don't know how to take instruction. We don't know how to receive. There, there, there are sisters that still don't know how to cook. Because you don't want to look at the instructions. You don't know how to receive instructions. Here it is, Naaman. Naaman, uh, Elijah, Elijah told Naaman to go dip seven times in the Jordan. And Naaman got all mad and upset because he did not want to receive instructions. And I'm saying to us, our lives would be much better. We'll have better homes. We'll have better lives if we learn how to live and we learn how to take instructions. We learn how to take direction. We learn how to take advice and good counseling. Here it is. You want a good home? You want a better life? You want to live the abundant life? The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 22. I, I, I wish my home was better. I wish, I wish my life was better. I, 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 wish I, can, I wish I knew how to keep a husband. I wish I knew how to keep a wife. You know how to, you know how to receive instruction? The Bible say wives. Look at, look at Ephesians 5 and 22. Wives. 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 Submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Some of us want, some, some of us want to try it want to try to skip over that and then want to try to figure out why your life ain't working. Why, why, why you can't get nowhere in life. It's because for one thing, you don't want to follow instructions. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he's the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. This man knew how to follow instructions. What did God tell what, what is Jesus telling us to do this morning? Jesus telling us to hear the word. Hear the word. So then faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Jesus tells us to believe. Jesus tells us to believe. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. He tells us to confess. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus the Christ the son of the living God and believe in your heart thou shalt be saved. He tells us to repent. Luke 13, 3 and 5. I'll tell you nay but except you repent you shall all likewise perish. And he tells us to be baptized. Acts 2 and verse number 38, uh, uh, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, Mark uh, 16 and 16, uh, he that believes and he is baptized. Uh, he tells them, and now folks are walking around, can I be saved would I be following instruction? This man followed instruction. What can I learn from this blind man? What can I learn from this beggar? Is that he knew how to follow instructions. And then let my last point out. Wanted to be finished here, but let my, my last point is that this man knew how to give thanks. He knew how to give thanks. I tell you, for the last 40 some odd years, this man hadn't been able to walk. 
For the last 40 some odd years, this man was laid at the temple. For the last 40 some odd years, somebody carried him to the temple. For the last 40 some odd years, he has been asking for arms. But now this man is able to get up and walk. And not only is he able to walk, this man is able to leap and jump up and down. Not only is this man able to walk and leap and jump up and down, but this man now is able to praise God for what God has done for him. What can I learn from this lame man? How can I live and learn? I can live and learn that I need to be thankful for what God has done for me. I need to be thankful for what God has brought me from. The psalmist said, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. This man was thankful. This man knew how to give thanks. He didn't care about who saw him thanking God. And if God brought you from a mighty long way, if God woke you up this morning, it doesn't matter who saw you, who, 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 who may be looking at you today, you know who did this for you. It was God that brought you this morning. It was God that woke you up this morning. It was God that put shoes on your feet this morning. It was God that gave you your health and strength. It was God that gave you a job. Praise be to God. Because God is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures throughout all generations. If you're here this morning, live and learn. This morning, you're in the right place. Because you can learn that from you can learn that from the lame man. You can learn that from the beggar. You're in the right place, y'all. You're, you're in the right place this morning. If you're gonna be looking at the books today. You're going to have to at least be on the right channel. The books ain't on every channel. Be in the right place, y'all. Live and learn that God has blessed you. I'm telling you, you I, I, I know, I know you, but you just believe and stuff uh, that, that I, I can make it on my own. I, I can do this here. I don't need nobody. I'm gonna, they're going to come a day. There's going to come a time that you're going to need somebody. And David said, I once was young, and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor see begging bread. You're going to need somebody. Use what you got. Use what you got. If God has given you a mouth, use it. If, you, if, God, if God has given you a, a piece of job, use that piece of job to get the, another job. But you ain't going to get nowhere just bearing your talents. God gave one five, gave one two, and gave one one, and he went and buried that. Use what you got. And those that used what they had, God did what, y'all? God say, well done. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. If you're here this morning, you do not know Jesus and the pardon of your sin. Come believing that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Come repenting of all your sin, confessing with your mouth that your, what your heart believes, that is that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and going down into the water of grave of baptism, and this is for the remission of your sins. If you are a member of the church, you're a Christian, a child of God, and you stand in need of prayer, we encourage you to get your life right with God today. The day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. God bless you, those that are listening online. God bless you, and Lord's willing, we'll see you on next time. Step to Jesus. Step to Jesus. Everything. And everything will be all right. Step to Jesus. Step to Jesus. Step to Jesus. To Jesus, all and battles. all your battles he'll help you fight. Step to Jesus, step to Jesus, he'll make everything alright. Step to Jesus, step to Jesus, everything.
everything. And everything will be all right. Step to Jesus. Step to Jesus. Step to Step to Jesus. Step to Jesus. All your and battles. all your battles he'll help you fight. Step to Jesus. Step to Jesus. He'll make everything all right. When you feel, feel you can't go on. Praying the Lord will make you strong. Our heart fixer is he. There is nothing, there is nothing, nothing he cannot say. Say to pronounce your doom. There's no room in my heart. There's no room. Jesus, he'll make everything all right. When you feel, feel you can't go on, praying pray the Lord, Lord will make you strong. Our heart, heart fixer is he, there is, no there is nothing he cannot say. Say that pronounce your doom, there's no room in my heart for 